Toyota, Toyota, Toyota. Slik starter den rota. Ja, rota, ja, rota. High Ace kommer nå. Here's how I removed the fuel tank from my 91 Hi Ace LH119. Start by dropping the spare tire and it takes a 13 millimeter socket. The 12 point fits on that little square head bolt and there's a collar that goes with it. I'm going to put this aside and save it even though I might not be reusing it. And I'll put the tire over there. Now I'm going to spray everything with PB Blaster so I can get some of these 12 millimeter bolts out a little easier without breaking them. Just using the cordless ratchet there to get them started. And hopefully I'll be deleting this bar, the spare tire carrier from underneath and not keeping the tire under here. Um, to just give me some more clearance basically. And because it doesn't really fit in now that I've got the hitch on. So instead of trying to make it fit, I'm just going to put it on the outside. So lower these off. I did break two of them, but managed to get it out. Like I said, hopefully I won't need it. So I'll just pull it out and put it aside for now. Using a combination of these male barbed ends and a female collar, I was able to reduce the fittings for the correct sizes for this cheap transfer pump I got at Princess Auto. Then using some of these female caps and the male double ends, I'm able to cap off the rest of the lines. So I'm just going to pull the main line, the return line, and the vent off here and cap them so that I don't get any diesel leaking or any smells in the shop while I'm doing this. And pulling the clamps back, I'll just take off this uh, filter from the main line of the tank carefully so I don't get diesel in my eyes. And I'll just cap that off for now. I've connected the transfer pump to the main fuel line using those reducers. Using the pump, I started to draw diesel out into this jerry can. Open this up so that I can let some air in. And so hopefully it drains quicker. And once it started flowing, it just kept flowing basically until the tank was pretty much empty. I captured all the diesel. And I'll just remove this drain plug and drain out any that's remaining. A little bit came out there and it was surprisingly clean. I was very impressed with how clean it was. I was expecting a lot more dirt. Then I'll go around and loosen all the 12 millimeter bolts. There are some along the front and some along the back. I think there are five along the back here, four or five. And I pulled them out and same thing on the front, four or five. They were a little bit harder to get to up there, but I managed to get them all out. Using the floor jack to support the tank, once the bolts were out I was able to let it down a little bit and I'm getting help today from my good friend Mark. We got myself, Charlie and Mark in the shop tonight and it's definitely a two-man job he's running the jack while I'm under there kind of wiggling with it and pushing um, so I've got the filler hose there and the uh, there's a little vent hose on top like a three-quarter inch one to contend with as well as the wires for the sending unit which are up on the front there on top and working around that kind of stuff we're able to take it out and Charlie doesn't like that noise too much. So now that it's out, you can take a look. Everything looks really good. There's a bit of gravel and dirt on the front. A little bit of surface rust, but nothing bad at all. There's a hole up there you can access the sending unit from inside the van, apparently. And up there is a fuel line for my diesel heater. But it looks very good for a 30-year-old van. It looks brand new underneath where that tank was. Yeah, there's all sorts of strange noises tonight. I'll see if I can get some of this cleaned off and take a look in where the fuel inlet is. I'll scrape this off and use a little bit of compressed air to clean that off. And take some of these Phillips head screws out. And then I can pull out the fuel pickup line from inside. And once the screws are out, there's just a 12 millimeter bolt at the back. Crack that off. And it comes right out carefully. Try not to break that rubber seal as I do it. And once that's unstuck, it pulls right out. And I was really curious to see what this would look like after 30 years of uh, unknown fuel quality. But that filter is clean, clean, clean. So it's in really good shape. It's in very clean condition. I was very impressed by that. 
I mean, I know this van has low mileage on it, but I mean, it still had fuel in it for 30 years. And I'm trying to look in the tank there and can't really tell. There might be a little bit of gunk or something on the bottom. So I'm going to rinse this out. Give the tank a really good rinse before I put it back in, just because I've got it all open and everything. So I'll carefully put this back in and get that seal to line up again. Get those screws on there and snug them down as well as that 12 millimeter bolt at the back. Then after I got it rinsed out, I cleaned everything off really well and gave it a coat of rust protection, just some rust check spray before I put it up in there. There's my temporary fuel tank. And using the same floor jack, I just slide it in I'm solo tonight and spray the connector to clean it and put a little bit of grease in there to protect it from moisture. But yeah, apparently you can change, access this and change that uh, sending unit from up inside the van if you're so inclined. So that's good to know. And with that connected, I carefully push it into place and jack it up. Try to get everything a little bit lined up. Going into place. I've got my fuel filler hose back on. And then as it goes up, I put that return hose through the frame. Kind of angle it up to that side and just slowly jack. And as you get close, get this on and keep jacking it. And I'm just double checking that that wire is not pinched or anything up in there. And before I put the bolts back in, I give them a little bit of um, thread locker. Just some uh, red Loctite so that they don't loosen out over time or anything like that, because that would be bad. And snug it down with the ratchet. And just rinse and repeat on all of these. Try to get them lined up. It's pretty close. Once you get a one or two started, they all sort of line up. And I just did the back first and then worked my way to the front. And then once they're all in and just sort of hand tight, I came back and snugged them all up nice and tight. And since I won't be putting the spare back under here, there's going to be a lot of clearance. And eventually I'd like to maybe do a custom fuel tank with a little more capacity, but still have some clearance, but not today. So I got the front ones on and that other line. I had to be careful with the heater line as I was tightening them and I've got all the fittings back on, all three lines. And I'm going to use new clamps up here. I took the wire clamps off. They were kind of corroded and hard to take off. So I'm just going to replace them with new hose clamps. And there was a guard on here originally, which I haven't been running for years just because it's in the way. And it's still in the way, so I'm not going to put it on. I'm not going to try to modify it either because I think things will just get stuck up there. But I uh, just put these regular hose clamps on because that's what I had. And I don't think I've ever had one fail, whereas the wire ones are sort of an unknown um, of unknown quality to me so they're a little bit different from factory but I'm sure they'll be equal or better to what was on there from factory just snug them up nice and tight and there's the old wire ones that came off kind of crusty looking so not that I don't trust them but I I know what I I know what I've, I'm gonna get if I use those other hose clamps so, so I'm just gonna fill it back up with diesel And I'm just using the same diesel that came out of the tank. It was clean, and I don't see any reason not to put it back in. There was nothing wrong with it, I don't think. So I'll put that back in. Tank is as clean or cleaner than it was. And the jerry can was clean, so put that back in. Try not to make a huge mess all over everything. like always happens when I fill something up with a jerry can. I always end up half of it on the side of the vehicle, half of it on my pants and shoes and the floor, but I was pretty careful here. And 
wiped up everything with a rag any drops that did drip out. And we're good to go. Toyota, 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 som sponsor denne låta. Ja, låta, ja, låta. Hei, er vår venn, er vår venn. Overalt så imponer.